This is the third part of my talk on diagnostic accuracy in which I'm going to be talking about sensitivity and specificity as well as positive and negative predictive values. Let's first look at sensitivity then. Here's our data on the beard test that we've looked at in the previous part of this lecture. I've got exactly the same numbers here and now we're going to define the sensitivity as the true positives divided by the sum of true positives and false negatives. In other words, it's all the numbers in the shaded column, the Y present uh, column, men. So it's true positives, which is 9, divided by the sum of true positives and false negatives, which is the total at the bottom of that column, 50. So it's the number that we got right in the left-hand column. 9 over 50 is 0.18 or 18 percent. So you can think of sensitivity as the fraction of patients with the disease, that's the ones in the left-hand column where the syndrome Y is present, the fraction of patients with the disease who have a positive test result. It's therefore sometimes known as the true positive fraction. It's the fraction that we got right in the column where the disease was present. So, in other words, it's the likelihood of detecting the disease when we know it's present. We confine our attention to the left-hand column where we know the disease is present and work out what fraction of those we detected, what fraction we got right. That's why it's called the sensitivity, how good the test is at finding it. On the other hand, specificity is defined as the true negatives divided by the sum of the false positives plus the true negatives. It's derived from the numbers in the shaded column, the right-hand column, those where Y syndrome is absent. So in this case, with the beard test, it's the true negatives, which is 49, divided by the sum of false positives and true negatives, that's the total in the right-hand column, which is 50. 49 over 50 is 0.98 or 98 percent. It's the fraction that we got right in the right-hand column. So specificity is defined as the fraction of patients without the disease, that is just the right-hand column, where Y syndrome is absent. The fraction of patients without the disease who will have a negative test result. The ones that we got right in the right-hand column. That's why it's sometimes called the true negative fraction. So it's the likelihood of a normal result in normal subjects. Normal subjects, the ones without the disease, and where we got a normal result, a negative test result. You may wonder why it's called specificity. Well, if you think of the opposite, 1 minus specificity, in this case that would be 1 minus 0.98 or 0.02 or 2%. So that describes how easily the test is confused by other conditions. A rather low confusion rate of only 2% means that it's not easily confused. This is sometimes called the false positive fraction. So it's how specific the test is to this disease. There are not many other things that confuse it. It is rather specific. So we have good specificity. The specificity is not quite so easy to understand as sensitivity, but the key thing is they're both defined on the columns in the data. Now let's see what happens when we change the prevalence. Here I've got the same group of mostly men, our football crowd that we looked at before, whereas we know we have a prevalence of men of 91%. Here the sensitivity is going to be 90, the number of true positives, as a fraction of the total in that column which is 500, that is 18%. 
and the specificity is going to be the number of true negatives, which is 49, as a fraction of the total in that column, which is 50. 49 out of 50 is 98 percent. Let's see what happens if we go to our group who are mostly women, our group of nurses. Here we know that the prevalence of men is rather low, it's only 9 percent, and our sensitivity is the number of true positives, which is now 9, as a fraction of the total in that column, which is 50. 9 out of 50 is 18 percent. And our specificity is true negatives, 490, as a fraction of the total in that column, 500. 490 over 500 is 98 percent. So we see that sensitivity and specificity don't depend on the prevalence. It's 18% sensitivity for the mostly men and for the mostly women, and 98% specificity for both groups as well. So sensitivity and specificity are reliable measures of how good the test is. They don't depend on the prevalence. Unlike accuracy, which as we saw in the previous part of this lecture, does depend on prevalence. Now, just to take it a bit further, let's introduce some more quantities. Positive predictive value is defined as the true positives as a fraction of the true positives plus the false positives. In other words, it's looking at the numbers in the first row. Remember, sensitivity and specificity looked at the columns. Now, positive predictive value and negative predictive value, which I'll look at next, look at the rows. So in this example, it's true positives, which is 9, as a fraction of the total in that row, which is 10. 9 out of 10 is 0.9 or 90 percent. So you can think of positive predictive value as the fraction of patients with a positive test result who actually have the disease. So it's the fraction we get right in the row of positive results. So it's the likelihood that a positive result is correct. Having decided that the result is positive, that is 10 cases with a positive result, it's the fraction that we got right. The likelihood that those 10 results are right is 9 out of 10 or 90 percent. Note that that's going to be different from sensitivity because the sensitivity looked at the true positives not as a fraction of those with a positive result, which is what we're doing now with positive predictive value, but it looked at that as a fraction of the column total when we looked at sensitivity. So you have to distinguish between sensitivity and specificity, which are taking as fractions of the column totals, and here positive predictive value and negative predictive value, which we'll look at in a moment, which are fractions of the row totals. So here's negative predictive value, and as you can expect, is defined as the true negatives as a fraction of the false negatives plus the true negatives. So it's just looking at the second row in the table, all the negative beard test results. So in this example, the true negatives of 49 as a fraction of the total in that row, which is 90. 49 out of 90 is 0.54 or 54 percent. So the negative predictive value is the fraction of patients with a negative test result who are genuinely disease free. They don't have this syndrome. So it's the likelihood that if we get a negative test result, it's correct. Of those 90 people without a beard, we were right in 49 cases. So the negative predictive value is 49 out of 90 or 54 percent. So, as we said, that differs from specificity because although specificity also looks at the true negatives, specificity defines it as a fraction of the column total, when negative predictive value defines it as a fraction of the row total. Once again, let's see how this varies with um, prevalence. Here, we've got our group of mostly men from our football crowd, a prevalence of 91 percent, 
uh, and we look at uh, what we got for the positive predictive value it's 90 the true positives as a fraction of the total with a beard which is 91 so it's 99 percent the negative predictive value is the true negatives which is 49 as a fraction of the total without a beard which is 459 or 11 percent here is our group of mostly women and we find that the prevalence as we calculated before of, of men is rather low at 9% uh, the positive predictive value is the true positives which is 9 as a fraction of the total in that row which is 19 or 9 over 19 is 47% the negative predictive value is 490 over 531 which is 92% so you can clearly see that positive predictive value and negative predictive value do change if the prevalence changes unlike sensitivity and specificity so positive predictive value and negative predictive value vary depending on whether we go and look for beards in a football crowd or for beards in a group of nurses So to summarize what we've seen about this hypothetical beard test here are the numbers we had nine true positives, 49 true negatives, one false positive and 41 false negatives which gave us a sensitivity of 18%, a specificity of 98%, a positive predictive value of 90% and a negative predictive value of 54% in this population where the prevalence is 50%. So we see that the beard test has got rather poor sensitivity 18% a rather low number it misses a lot of cases of syndrome Y it's not very sensitive to to men a lot of men can slip through uh, and miss the beard test on the other hand it has got excellent specificity a specificity of 98% means that it is very uh, unlikely to be confused by other conditions there are not many other things that give you a beard it's just this one bearded woman that confounded the results in this example the beard test has got a good positive predictive value 90 percent means that a positive result is very likely to be right so a person with a beard is highly likely to have syndrome Y they're highly likely to be a man on the other hand the beard test has got a rather poor negative predictive value only 54 percent so a negative result someone without a beard doesn't really help you very much it's not really going to tell you whether they're a man or a woman just because they don't have a beard that's what we mean by a rather poor negative predictive value someone without a beard you can't really tell whether they're a man or a woman so what we've learnt is that sensitivity and specificity tell us something about the test it's how good it is at detecting the disease and importantly specificity and sensitivity don't depend on prevalence of the disease in the population we look at we can apply the test to a group with a high prevalence or a low prevalence and get the same results for sensitivity and specificity of course what we really want is high sensitivity and high specificity ideally we would have have a hundred percent sensitivity and 100% specificity but we're unlikely to get both positive and negative predictive values on the other hand don't tell us about the test they tell us about the patient the likelihood that the patient has the disease once we have completed the test actually if you think about it that's what the doctor really wants to know that's why we perform the test to tell us what is wrong with this patient the trouble is that positive and negative predictive values not only depend on the sensitivity and specificity of the test but also on the prevalence of the disease in the population so they will vary from one population to another so that's the end of part three of this lecture in part four we'll take this a little bit further and look at some additional features